the SEFTA is a promise to the people of Africa to significantly contribute to the attainment of the Agenda 2063 and to ensure that no one is left behind. It drives the continent towards integration, political stability and unity based on the ideals of our founding fathers and the vision of Africa's renaissance. The SEFTA agreement is expected to foster industrialization and regional competitiveness through the creation of regional value chains and improved agro-processing and expanded markets for meaningful intra-Africa trade and jobs for the young people especially of our continent. I commend your Lens's efforts in successfully steering the conclusion of phase one and phase two negotiations in trade in goods and services and I urge you to stay the course and conclude the remaining ones and also oversee their implementation. To ensure effective implementation, Kenya strongly supports the establishment of regional offices and is keen to host the East African Regional Office in Nairobi. <laughs> Kenya looks forward to integrating Africa's financial sector in ways that promote intra-African trade as well as speed operationalizations of the policy and research development initiatives that you and me discussed when you came to Kenya and we were both at uh, one of our universities trying to consolidate this position. I'm very happy uh, to be at the ACFTA Secretariat I was with Wamkele when we launched the first um, trade facilitation under ACFTA, under the Guided Trade Initiative, where we flagged off the first Kenyan tea and other products that came to Ghana and to the West Coast. I just, uh, while we were walking around the exhibition hall, business people told us that after that first initial flag off, there's been many more and the frequency is increasing, meaning that we are in the right trajectory. Let me confirm that um, it was a very proud moment in February this year when we saw the instruments that consolidated the place of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement by the AU heads of state. And I want to confirm that as part of the reform of our organization to make the Africa Union a fit for purpose organization, we're going to consolidate our place in making sure that the 1.4 billion people market in Africa becomes a viable entity that will provide opportunity for trade, for investment, for business, for commerce, so that we can create prosperity that leaves nobody behind and shared prosperity that brings on board the majority of the people in our continent. You're all aware that we spend about $5 billion every year just dealing with exchange rate issues between our trading uh, business people. $5 billion is big money in any currency. And therefore, the setup by the AfriEx in Bank to provide a payment settlement system for all our traders so that trade in Africa can be carried out in any currency and there will be a mechanism to make sure that once that trade is over, there will be somebody to provide settlement facility and to ensure that we do not lose because of currency differentials between one currency and another. And when we, when we say this, we are not saying we are against any currency. No, we just want to fend for ourselves. We just want to make sure that 
in trading, we don't lose because of different exchange rates and different currencies. And I, I want to specifically underscore the importance of us working together and building synergy and um, creating institutions. And I will be working with President Nana Kufuado to make sure that all financial institutions under the AU, from the fund to the bank to the insurance, are all ratified so that we can build the necessary <laughs> financial ecosystem to support trade, investment, and business in our continent. It is our intention as heads of state to make sure that we reform the African Union to make it fit for purpose. As we talk today, we have a fairly dysfunctional setup. We have an executive that has no accountability mechanism. We have a parliament that has been made important. When I went to address the Pan-African Parliament in South Africa, there is no bureaucracy that works unless you have serious accountability. So um, it is necessary for us to reinforce the place of the Pan-African Parliament. It is important for us, if we have to have an African Union that works for the people of our continent, it must be accountable and there must be a mechanism to adjudicate a court to adjudicate on matters that affect our organization. Without a court to adjudicate, without a parliament for accountability, it is not possible for us to have an optimal organization that works for us. And therefore, it is necessary uh, for us to move in that direction. We are a continent of great opportunity. We are a continent that has 65 of the world's arable, uncultivated land. We are a continent with 60% of the world's renewable energy resources. We are a continent with between 30 and 40% of the world's mineral resources. We are shortly going to be the single largest market in the world. That is. That's our continent, and therefore, it is our responsibility. Because it is said by um, one great leader from Nigeria that until the lion learned to write its story, all stories glorified the hunter. So we have to learn to write our own story. And I promise you, we are going to write our own story. And it's going to be a great story. We've been to many capitals in Europe, in America, in Asia. I think it is time that we also invite them to come to our continent. So we are slowly working on a mechanism where we will have the Africa Economic and Investment Summit every year. We will have it for about three or four days. On day one, we will invite China. On day two, we'll invite the US. On day three, we will invite uh, Europe. On day four, we'll invite the next guy. And so um, we will make better use of our time. <laughs> and we will make it easier for everybody to engage with us. Because in any case, any serious business people who are not thinking about Africa will shortly be on the losing end. 
So we must position ourselves appropriately. And ACFTA is going to be our vehicle. Mr. Wamkele Mene is going to be our vehicle for positioning Africa appropriately to be the epicenter of trade, of investment, of commerce. And I am very confident that uh, that will give us the opportunity to be the continent that we should be. The signing of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area in March of 2018, extraordinary session of the Assembly of Africa Union, was a milestone in pursuing more integrated and inclusive economic growth anchored on development of skills, um, market integration, market diversification, and of course underpinned by technology transfer within our economies and from outside. You have said there is a contest <clears throat> between who deposited first the instruments of ACFTA at the headquarters in Addis. I thought it was settled. <laughs> and it was settled in, a, in an amicable win-win uh, fashion that, uh, uh, let me put it in context. This weekend, uh, over Easter, I went to a restaurant and uh, there was this uh, gentleman who said that uh, the philosophy around there was that ladies first, men in front. <laughs> so I don't know whether, who, who, who was first finally? So maybe, I don't know, uh, Kenya was first to deposit, but somehow Ghana was in front. <laughs> and uh, I think it was settled that uh, that's why Ghana eventually hosted the Secretariat. And we are very proud of what the government of Ghana has done in making sure that the Secretariat is appropriately facilitated to take up its central role in the integration of the African market. 